Hey everyone, welcome back to Banjo-Kazooie. So last time we finished off Spiral uh, Mountain, the tutorial area, and we stopped right in front of Granny's Lair. So let's go ahead and enter and deal with the main hub area of the game. Welcome to Gruntilda's Lair. Um, so first we got a picture of her. Um, over there we have their first world, and here we have a cliff which is too uh, slick, or the angle is too much for Banjo to handle, so we'll have to take care of that pretty soon. So really, because we can't enter first world until we get our first jiggy, which is right here. Now we have a jiggy, so now we can go ahead and enter the first world, which is Mumbo's Mountain. You'll notice that the music changes depending on what area that you're at, so there's our first portrait, it's missing a jigsaw, we put the piece in, we're all good to go. Models is telling us how to do this. Of course, the more worlds we go to, the more jiggies that we'll need to finish their pictures and continue forward, so. so that one was super easy. And so now, welcome to Mumbo's Mountain. So, um, there's three new moves, as Bottles is saying, so let's go ahead and get those real quick. Um, you'll also see that there's notes here as well. We need to collect a hundred of these in a stage um, to pass through various note doors that are hidden in Granny's lair. Go ahead and pick up the ginger as well. We need to collect five of those um, to get a jiggy. You have to do that in each and every stage. And so main reason to play the Xbox version over the um, N64 version is because one, it looks a lot better, and two, um, the notes in the original N64 version, I think I may have covered this last time, reset every time you die or you leave the stage, jackass, um, and so that was a big issue where it was like, okay, well, we... Um, it's not too bad right now, but, you know, there's other stages later on in the game where just absolute pain in the asses to get through. So it's like, okay, um, this, and that was due to a memory limitation with the N64 version, um, that obviously could work in this version. So they just went ahead and made it now that even if you die, all the notes that you've collected are already gone and you don't have to recollect everything over again, which is really helpful in Rusty Bucket Bay. So here we've found bottles. We're going to learn the Talon Trot. And this lets us get up um, steeper inclines. So. Oh yeah, and if your energy is low, bottles will automatically refill it. So it's a good way to get some energy. Get our first Jiggy here. Ten of us in each world will help you progress through the Witch's Lair. So there's nine worlds. 10 in each of those worlds, so that's 90, and then 10 in Gruntilda's Lair. So a total, there are 100 Jiggies in the game. There's some blue eggs. We're going to learn a couple moves with those blue eggs soon. 
down there is a Mumbo Token. We're gonna go ahead and collect that. Another Chinjo. Mumbo Tokens we need to take to Mumbo so we can use his magic for us. These are Termites. So they just explode in the body pieces. This is a good thing. Um, the beta version of those I thought had Mumbo's masks in there as well, so it was like thought of originally that maybe Mumbo was one of them, and that's what he looks like underneath his mask, but never gets clarified at all, so that's a little bit of a block point that just kind of went away in the sequel, so. Ground cup bottles here. Huts here, gets us some notes and other goodies. We've already collected 51, which is over half of the notes in the stage. There's 100 notes in each stage. Um, and that was the, he was telling us that's the first gate up that's steep in Klein and Granny's lair. So I could just exit right now and be content, but um, oh no, this is going to be 100% run. So, because. I mean, basically, when all's said and done in the game, you pretty much need most of the jiggies and the notes anyways to get everything, so might as well just clear out each world. I don't have to worry about it. There's a statue, live statue. Um, every time I save and quit, my life reset, so... And there was a jiggy in here, yay! Um, okay, so we come back to the totem. Here, because there's a jiggy here. It plays that animation every single time, um, as long as you're normal Banjo and Kazooie. Um, animal transformations, which I'll show later on, when you get that um, a jiggy, there's no animation for those, and the animation was completely removed from Banjo Tooie. So, there's also a special animation once you get all 10 jiggies in each world as well, which don't think we'll see it in this world because they plan on getting the animal transformation or using animal transformation as the tenth uh, jiggy. So, but we'll still get to hear the fan which is good. We've got four of those already, so we're almost good to go on that. Um, you see, there's a little alcove to the left over there. I'm going to. There we go. Got our honeycomb pieces. Um, there's two in each stage, so um, we've already got one. The other one is actually on top of the totem pole, um, but it's too high for us to climb up, so... Well, you didn't make the <laughs> noise. You just start going forward, like, let me try to sneak by here. Um, those bowls are... Uh, they're not invincible. You can hit them, knock them down, but they will get back up, so they're pretty much... You can only stun them, really. Oh, there's our last Jinjos over there. There's some more notes. This stage is really simple. Um, probably only take me maybe 10-15 minutes to get through this area. Um, obviously, later worlds are going to take much longer. Um, Click Clock Wood is basically four worlds thrown into one, so that's that's pretty hellish to get through. <laughs> Not hellish as in it's awful, just hellish as in it's, I mean, it drains you, yeah, because it's like, well, it's four worlds in one, basically, so. Though, once again, it's not as bad as the original, um, in 64 version, where it's like, you can't, you know, you have to deal with the notes, so if you died in any of the areas, you'd have to go through them all over again, so. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get our next, uh, Bottles. 
thing, but I need to have Congo here throw oranges on top of these panel switches. I don't know why these exist. Just apparently he hadn't hit them hidden away. Congo's not very bright, obviously. Um, and there was an orange sticking out that was actually 3D compared to that flat object over there. This monkey over here wants some oranges. We're gonna give him an orange so that this platform can then go up. Chimpy, like Congo's orange. And he also says, yeah, this is Jiggy. So yeah, in this game, they're just basically pissing away Jiggies at ya um, for the most basic of things. Oh, did you exist? Here, here's a Jiggy. Uh, in the sequel, they give you a grip grab move, which is so much better. Time for the buzzer to learn the ancient ways of the egg. Hold the right or left trigger, then press Y to shoot an egg forward. Press B instead, and you can shoot them out from behind. Um, so shooting forward is basically a straight projectile, and shooting behind is basically like a lobbing bomb. Um, you'll pretty much be using the forward shot a lot more than the back one, but that isn't to say that you won't use the other way um, at all in the game. There are some good moments where you can basically lob them around, and it's basically like scatter bombs. So. There he goes, he gives us some, uh, he gives us 50 eggs to work with, so, which is horrible, on top of what we already had. Gonna hit this witchy, or this Grantilda switch over here, which causes a Jiggy to show up in the overworld. Um, that incline above the mountain is way too steep even for the talent trot, so that's what we're going to use the animal transformation for. Um, so basically it's, yeah, maybe got it all figured out. Right. I just beat Barch. That was stupid. Don't mind me, just being dumb. Uh, sometimes I miss that grim grim. Okay. I just did it again. I, did I... Oh, because I'm hitting X. He sh look at that, man. He, like, frickin' throws those things like a goddamn torpedo. down for the count, or we like to think so, except the minute you, like, leave, he goes back to his old ways of throwing shit at it again, so even though we beat him, he's still an ass. And that's the last time we'll see Congo in this game. Uh, he actually does return in the sequel. Um, it's part of an area called Witchy World, where he's the, um, he's the main, he's the big tense, uh, guy, I guess. Or ticket salesman, I want to say. So yeah, you'll notice that the music changes, of course, depending on certain areas. So that's pretty cool. Um, just one of those things where it's like you go underwater, it changes. You go up there, it changes. It just makes it more interesting instead of just the same music. Okay, so we get to shoot eggs into here. I'm gonna try to shoot it backwards. That did not work. Uh, oh yeah, if you do shoot them backwards and they land back in, and they land back at you, um, seriously? Are you kidding? There we go. Um, need one more. If you shoot the eggs. Uh, weird to hit 
protection there. Um, so you shoot the eggs out of the back and they somehow manage to, you manage to touch them before they break apart. Um, they'll go back into your inventory, so. But I always hate how the frickin' eggs work in this game, because look at this shit. You're right there. Alright, there you go, you dumb fuck. It's gonna be a real pain in the ass come... Actually, you're really... The other ones are a lot more forgiving. Oh, there's another Jiggy there. I mean, yeah, seriously, the stage has just got a crap ton of them sitting around. So, there you go, we've got nine of them. There's one more to go in the stage. We'll go see Mumbo. He's taking a nap. Now, his icon in the corner is actually from the second game, and you can kind of see that they smoothed out his face in the second game. For some reason, he's really blocky in this game. Yeah, I know. I need five. Pretty sure you have one in this room. Or if he doesn't, I know where it's at. We'll take all your goddamn eggs, Hansel. Alright. It's actually in the termite mound, so... There it is, it's right there. There you go, we got five of them. So yeah, you notice that that incline was way too steep for even Kazooie to go through. Um, and really, the Talon Tread will be your primary mode of transportation if you can and you need speed. Um, just because, of, yeah, even if it sounds awful. Of her just going, hur, 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 hur. Banjo is just very weird looking while in the process. Alright. So you give him his five tokens. Um, every time you encounter him, um, he basically needs another five each time, so next time he'll need ten. Um, and so magic free to change back, you come when ready. So once you do it for the first time, you can you don't have to give him any more tokens for each world. So first spell is the termite. The termite has no offensive capabilities at all, so tread lightly. Um, but of course it can basically go up steep inclines. Um, and the most of the termites will be friendly. Um, some of the ones in here are kind of assholes, so. Yeah, like this one. I thought that one was started attacking them for whatever reason. See, now we can climb up here. Oh, I'm sure I figured I was gonna hit a wall or something and cause it to go each. This one does. There we go. Hey, I got a hundred and it gives you an extra life. I forgot about that. Alright. So you get that little extra jingle and bottles goes, yeah, you get them all. How about that? Yeah. Alright. Carefully walk out here. The light. Doesn't really matter because. I'm just gonna do a world at a time, so. There we go, last jiggy of this area. Alright. And also, you'll notice when I jump from a high enough ledge, I don't take any damage. Yay! Um, he cannot swim either, so you just stick to the ground. I mean, you he's, he doesn't need any air or anything. I don't think any of the transformations need any air at all, so. Though I don't think the last one can even go in water, but yeah. Um, so that should be all the totals. Yep, there we go. Alright, so Mumbo's Mountain is taken care of. So with this animal transformation, we can actually leave the stage. And going back on the pad that we came in. And every time you open a world now, one of the enemies will show up in the hub area. Just there, so now I can go up here, climb up here and get that jiggy. So 
there we've got 11 jiggies in our total right now so and then once we go forward even further um yeah mumbo tells us his magic is getting weak and we'll turn back if we go too far so it was basically much more convenient um to go that way to do it that route so we don't have to go visit mumbo again to change back we can just let it you know putter out some which is basically how you want to do take care of do that's why you want to do it with all the animal transformations save it for last and then when you need to exit the area to go do something um you know you can just very easily get out of the stage um use do whatever you need to do and then let the magic run out on its own so Wiles is gonna tell us uh, that she sealed it up with musical spells. Open it, you must collect the musical notes from the worlds. How many do we need? I wonder if the giant 5 0 will tell us the strength of the musical note. Well, luckily, we got 100, so we're double that. There you go. That little animation right there is the same animation that plays when you get all 10 jiggies, so... Oh yeah, we got... Brentilda here. Brentilda, it's basically like the Wizard of Oz. Hello there, young ones. I'm Brentilda, Grentilda's nicer sister. I've crept down here to help you defeat the old hag. It's about time she was taught a lesson. I'll garnish disgusting secrets, and I'll tell you three of them every time you find me. Uh, remember them, yell young ones, as they will help you avoid a fiery fate. She's talking about very late in the game. <laughs> so yeah, if you talk to her, she tells you three different ones. Granny brushes her rotten teeth with salted slug-flavored toothpaste. And this is one of those things that actually changes depending on every time you play the game, so um, it's not... When you get to the certain questions at the last point in the game when you have to answer these, you can't use like a guide for it. You have to actually have talked to her in order to figure out what they need to, what they need to be and actually keep record of it. Baked beans. And she's a gross one. Saggy Maggie's. Okay, so we got all three of those. So I think we did, just to make sure. Yep. All right. Alright, we got all those. Um, so yeah. Uh, we got one of our henchmen. So if we go down here, there's one of these cauldrons here, and I like how Banjo just snapped while I was in the air. Activate a magic cauldron. Or two to create some sort of shortcut. So you'll find a few of these in the world, um, in our lair, um, to easily. So when you get, so instead of having to walk through her entire lair, because every time we save and quit, we'll start back at the entryway. So this will make it easier once we do find the other cauldron to warp back and forth. And each floor has usually a piece of her at some point. Um, there's our next world, which is Treasure Trove Cove. To remove pieces that you've already put down, move the right stick down. Once the picture is complete, all the pieces are stuck there permanently. There we go. Treasure Drove Cove. So yeah, we're doing we're in pretty good shape because um, even those jiggies that we've already collected will easily take care of the, the next areas set, which it's right over there, that's the third world, but you'll see that there's a pad over there, but it's translucent right now, which means we can't use it, which we'll need to learn from Treasure Trove Cove. So. And basically, the way that this game is set up, you'll pretty much be able to just clear out each and every world all at once, except for in case of one world where you need to actually go to the next world to learn a move before you can come back to it and get the last jiggy. Take care of that guy. There's another cauldron. It's not the same color as the other one. This one's a dark red. This one we will not actually be able to find its companion until very late in the game. 
Um, it actually leads up to the last worlds, and it's very, very convenient. Um, so up here is Clanker's Cavern, which is the third world's area. 180 notes for the next musical door, so yeah. And 100. I'm down here. I'm going to show this off real quick. Alright, so here's a little bit of beta trivia. Um, so this you'll see is Click Clack Wood. Click Clack Wood is actually the final area of the game. Um, and its pad is not here right now. You'll actually need to hit a switch once you get up to the Click Clack Wood area. And from there, then the pad will show up down here, which if you have the cauldron set up, you can use that cauldron to warp back to that one that we just went to, that dark red one, which will be right here. Put in the pieces, then warp back up there and take care of it real quick. Um, this area looks very out of place. Like, it's cool that it exists, and it's kind of like hinting at, obviously, that this is a later area in the game. But, this forest... Yeah, it looks out of place because it's actually, or it's been thought that this was supposed to be for a beta area that didn't make it into the final game, even though there's a picture of it in Banjo's house called Fungi Forest. I think that's what it's called. Um, I believe that's what was supposed to be here. Um, but instead they were just like, oh, well, we removed Fungi Forest and we put Cluck Cluck Wood, so there would have been like two forest areas in the game. So, um, so yeah, that's a little bit of a beta thing. Another Brantilla thing. Hard breath. Jesus Christ. Putrid Parrot Puke is her favorite smell. Ah, I wonder if it smells like Parmesan cheese. Favorite color is Gruesome Green. Never would have imagined that, seeing as how she's green and her sister is too. Alright, so we're gonna swim back on through. So yeah, we'll be back very later on in this game for that one. I love this theme. I mean, it's kind of irritating if you think about it, because that's all it plays, but it also has some cool remixes going on with this. So. Okay, um, so here is the entryway to the next area you'll need to flip flap to get up there. That's not a flip flap. This is a flip flap. So um, next time we're going to cover Treasure Trove Cove. Um, get all the jiggies, get all the notes, get all the honeycomb pieces, or you know, honeycomb expansion pieces, all of that jazz. Then we'll go back and get the um, stuff for uh, you know, uh, we'll put the jiggies in for Clanker's Cavern. There we go. Train of thought just immediately left. So put those pieces in, and then we'll go from there. So, all right. We'll catch you next time.